Lindstrom, the commentary team for this one, Alex Laley, Christina Takach, and Phil Yates. Michael, thanks very much indeed. 160 matches are now in the books. The original field has been culled from 128 to 64. By the end of this evening, we'll have only a sweet 16. It really is the business end of this World Pool Championship, and what a day lies ahead. And what a match for Thank you, the openers. Right. It is Sky against the guy, i.e. the defending champion, Fedor Gorscht. Woodward has won the lag, and of course gets to break. And watching this with great interest is Alex Laley, of course, is the European Moscone Cup captain, and also Christina Takach, who told me just a while ago that Fedor Gorscht is her boyfriend. So you will be not in any way partisan. You'll be quite down the line. Totally fair to both players. Well, um, this guy is very um, experienced player and he's got a lot of confidence that actually helps a lot uh, for his matches to win. But Feder is um, younger, hungrier, um, and I'm sure he's gonna do great. Of course, I'm cheering for him, but also I'm cheering for the great pool so all the fans around the world can enjoy it with us. Christina, we wouldn't expect anything less. It's entirely, okay, entirely the right thing to do, to be in your man's corner. That was a nice lag, rolling the cue ball, who gets closest to the rail, gets the opening break. And if that tells us something about the intensity of this match and how evenly packed it is, well, the greater. I'm so much looking forward to this match, today's matches on all the tables. It's different now. Did you feel, Christina, that the intensity out there in the venue is just higher. You see different faces of the players. Of course, it's uh, not that I just see, but you know, playing other tournaments, I can also experience it. The further you go in the tournament, the deeper you go. It's always higher pressure, and you could see players, you know, being more focused. They don't talk or laugh around with everybody. Uh, they are more uh, concentrated, trying to get into a beast mode. You could beast definitely, mode. yeah, nice. you could definitely feel that. It's like a special vibe from people. Mm, nice shot. Needs another one. The two ball, he could roll in with a nice speed, let his stroke out. Here, he will need to elevate can't really strike it, it's to slide it smoothly. Shot. And that sets him up for winning the opening wreck. A lot of distance still, three rails with high right. Coming around to seven. Judge that one. But the eight ball passes the left to the left on the nine, so no problems here. Opening shots by Skyler. She's looking very comfortable and confident. As he was also in Gibraltar, you were there. He looked good in the Masters, apart from that last match. He's striking the ball with a lot of quality. When's the first strike? Yes, a crisp start from Skyler Woodward. And before the contest, he gave us his thoughts. The group stage was good. Uh, 
I won two and lost one. Uh, but for the most part, I, I played pretty solid. You know, a couple mistakes here and there, but I know what I gotta do and gotta clean it up. Knowing that you can't lose now, of course, I think people will bear down, bear, bear down harder. Like, I know I will. It's gonna be a tough match, of course. Uh, I've played them a few times. I've won and, and I've lost, so uh, we'll see what happens. To go on and win and uh, be world champion would be the uh, best thing ever in my career so far. And that from a man who's been a Moscone Cup MVP. 16 tables simultaneously in operation right now. Ralph Suke, the veteran, he's 1-0 up on Aloysius Schiap. Mario Hiu, who we saw Leading so one. impressively win last night. He's 1-0 up on Mark Vidal. Torsten Homan has taken the first against Stephen Holland from Canada. And if you go to YouTube Matchroom Pool, you can also follow the action on Table 2. Another great match, Albin Ocean, a former MVP in the Moscone Cup, is up against Sanjin Peglivanovic from Bosnia. So the pool junkies are having a great week. Two rounds today. So the 64 remaining players are all battling to get to the last 16. And have a nice restless night of sleep tonight. Nice. Took that extra little time to assess the contact on the four. As Skyler said in his interview there, it was a mixed bag in the group phase. Started off with a 9-0 whitewash of Yaroslav Polash. Then though, beaten 9-2 by Radoslav Babica. But he qualified by beating So Sure 9-4. So in and out. Christina, you're experienced, you're a champion player. You're used to distantiate yourself from your emotions, but now that you're sweating the match for Fedor, how high are your emotions? I can definitely say that I'm getting more nervous for his matches than for my own, because um, as you know, when you just watch and you can't do anything, you always feel more pressured because uh, you just want to help somehow, but you can. <laughs> you can't. Uh, so. please. Um, it's of course uh, stressful for me and um, it's one of the part of being together with professional athlete as well as you are it's a double pressure but um, I have trust in him and I'm sure no matter what's gonna happen uh, he's gonna bounce back and oh I thought you were going to say no matter what happens I'll love him always <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll love him always, uh, so it doesn't change anything for me. But of course, I know how much would it mean for him, and I only wish the best for him. A turnover. Woodward. Loss of position started on the three ball. As long as they're in line, they're well able to control the cue ball. 98 out of 100 times. But once you start to lose position on this ultra sensitive cloth, then anything can happen. Any champion can, can miss a shot over distance with speed, with a lot of angle. There's a lot of deflection on this table, meaning sensitivity to playing shots with side spin. Crossover with low on the ball or go forward, rolling towards the nine. Nothing fancy. Personal preference, that type of shot, for example, I think Shane Van Boning would have punched it over. Better 
boys. One so second. there it is, the first couple of racks have been shared. We've heard the, the thoughts of Skylar Woodward. Now it's the turn of Fedor Gorscht. Well, I'm playing a little better, a little better with every match. The first one was tough. The next one was easier, but the opponent was better. So I'm getting better match by match, by match and I'm looking forward to play today. I played the match on the main TV arena, so I have a little experience there already, and I think I have an advantage because Skylar didn't play there yet. I like it so far, you know, I like how the tables play, and I feel the speed pretty good already, so I get used to it already. Now this is the table in the far right of the arena, and if you pan round, there's so much top quality pool going on. A couple of notable scores for you. Albin Ashen, 2-0 up on Alfred uh, And Kelly Fisher, 2-0 up on Jeremy Sosi. First break for Fedor Gorst. Perfect. Perfect hit. So difficult with that kind of speed to control the exact thickness of the hit on the one. And you'll play it with a little bit of sight. Perfect textbook. Yeah, Feder is well known for his uh, practicing break because um, most of the time he's working on his break, as it's very important part of the game, especially in the nine ball. So he's been really working a lot on his break lately, uh, especially for preparation for world championships. And not one break, but maybe three or four. Do you have the ability to shift during a match or between matches? Absolutely. The devil is in the detail. Just making balls and seeing the one ball occasionally isn't good enough. I got the impression, Christina, that Fedor is extremely dedicated. Practices an awful lot. He is. That's we're very um, similar in those kind of things because we both believe that. Uh, practicing is is the key for the success and consistent game and uh, working on the same thing time and time again it's very important just to make sure that you you can do it even with your closed eyes in the middle of the night if somebody wakes you up so last position feather on the five ball extension call he chose to not play it with check side on the ball. Expected that cue ball to come through the three ball a little bit more. But with the extension on the cue, he'll be able to reach this. He'll play the cue ball with low right. Just a hair thick. And these Arcadia tables will not allow that ball to drop. A turnover. But a difficult positional route to get from the five to the six. Yeah, probably he'll have to play low right. Yeah. I actually think there was a bit of a top on the ball. Well, the positional shot was on a sixpence or for someone from Lubbock, Texas, on a dime. Yeah, that was a good shot, all right. Well, Christina, I know you're leaving us after this rack, so thanks very much indeed for, for being here. And fingers crossed for Fedor, right? Attention, please. Oh. Thank you guys for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure always commentating with you. Oh, he's looking at the cut. Not the bank. But he likes those.
close to the ball. Two turnovers in one rack. The tension is palpable in the Marshall Arena. like to get the cue ball away from the rail, but it will not force. Hmm. Is he going to play level cue or elevate and punch? Let's see. I would say level cue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Well done to Fedor Gorsh. Takes advantage of that missed seven ball from Skylar Woodward, and the title holder leads 2-1. that and yeah then you're just talking to it if you want it so it wasn't won't keep So much going on on these 16 tables here at the Marshall Arena. So many big names like Roberto Gomez, 2 1 up on a South African. Kelly Fisher started well against Jeremy Sosi, 3 1 ahead. There's Ralph Suke. Torsten Homan, his fellow German, is ahead. Albin Auschen has made a great start against Sanyan Perlovanovic. And of course, as the afternoon progresses, we will keep you right up to date with all of the scores. There's a revolving door in.
on box two. Replacing Christina to catch behind the microphone, making his debut, I believe, in here. It is Mickey Krauss from Denmark. Welcome, Mickey. Thank you. It's uh, nice to be here. The great Dane, Mickey Krause, making a good showing as of late. Don't know you too well, but I do know that you work hard on your game. A student with a lot of commitment. We see you battle online with Niels Fein a lot. You're lucky that he's around, but you also go there and spar with him. And you took that trip to the States, 10 days on your own. That's what you need to do. And you're doing it, so compliments. Looking for a push out, Skyler Woodward. If he lands on the three, he'll use the three to know exactly how big a portion of the one he will allow Gorse to see. Just part of the left side of the one. Ooh, it's very tr tricky. The cue ball, the one ball, and the pocket in one done. line. Difficult to manage that. Tricky to try and go behind to one. Shot. A little bit of knowledge there. Woodward saw he could clear the kiss where Gorst thought he couldn't. But a nice little gap between the five and eight. Probably doesn't see the right the the good side of the one to be able to cut it. There's a 30 second shot clock in play and the players will have one extension per rack. It seems like a lot to just shoot the shot, but you also need to consider, think, analyze. I like it. Nice try. You also try to hold the cue ball a little more, bite into it with backspin. But the most important, he got the cut on the one. No open shot, it needs to wait to see how good the next safety from Woodward will be. One very interesting scoreline involving Skyler Woodward's World Cup partner, Billy Thorpe. He trails 4-0 against Michael Gavansiak from the Czech Republic. Gavanciak already has defeated Jason Shaw here. Yeah, Gavanciak, very strong player, good pressure player, took down many top names over the years in the European scene. Was asked also to play Bundesliga in Germany. He's a player. Nice shot there. Bit of Unlucky for Woodward that again Gorst had a gap. What do you think, Mickey, will be a decisive factor in this match? What could be a decisive factor? Um, yeah, and I think it uh, it depends a lot of the break on the break and. So, I pretty much think if Fedor he's gonna get his breakdown, he's gonna he can win a big. But the same with Woodward. So, how was your experience here, 
Mickey, I know that you lost last night to Jan van Leerop to be in the last 64, but to be involved in the championship, that was presumably one of the biggest things in your career so far. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, I was so nervous when I played in uh, in in this event. Um, I was more nervous here than I actually was at the World Cup. Um, but I think it, I had a, I struggled a little bit with the break. I didn't make a ball um, uh, in against uh, Jan van Leeuw and and he made like a ball in uh, in like 50% of them and got a good layout so it was tough so that tells us 50 percent of the breaks that all tables play different because we're watching a lot of the tv table balls going easier on this table and it depends can also depend on the time of day the referee that you have you know there's there, there are many variables sure is and if you go back home, what will be the thing that you look forward to to work on the most? I think my safe, uh, my safeties. I gotta work on that uh, because I'm a little too aggressive. I think um, so. I'm working a lot on, on my safeties. Yeah, safeties will get you the ball. So the defending champion has made an agreeable start. He leads by three racks to one. And earlier, he told us a little bit more about himself. I was playing different games. My coach told me to try pool, and I was seven. That's that's how the first time I played it. First queue, I was playing with the house queue first, but then I bought Sean, I think, that's the German queue. My first tournament memory is probably when I won my first amateur tournament in Moscow when I was like nine. My first success on the professional arena was uh, in 2014 when I won uh, the tournament in Greece. Speaks well, Fedor. Good lad. He's been in the concrete box with us on a few occasions and it's quite clear, Alexey, not only plays the game well, but he loves it. No, he loves it. He's really a student. I told him, uh, no, I know him for a long time pretty well. And during Moscone Cup preparation, got to know him better. And I said, listen, you're so young. If you continue getting all that knowledge in your brain, you're going to fall over by the time you're 30. He's like a professor. Oh, that's it. That's that a really good break you got there. Oh, that's an understatement. Perfect break. Now, he would like to be straight in on this one. Come back. I mean, still would need to make a big draw shot. Speed control, super important. But rather that than with top. It's tricky if you have little angle and if you, you have to force with topspin. Tricky to really feel the exact deflection of the cue ball. A little bit short. I think he can work with it. I think he can play it to the long, uh, to the long corner. Uh, the uh, that that three ball. Definitely. In so doing, he would avoid contact. He can avoid contacting the nine, but he's playing to a small zone for the cue ball. He said it in a pre-match interview um, that he feels the speed good on these tables. We saw that on the draw shot, we see it here. Cubal land, lands in the right position, often. 
yeah, he he got a really strong uh, uh, a really strong cue ball. That's for sure. Would you rather, if you had to choose, Mickey, would you rather have a good break on the table or really good speed control, like if you play on on the TV table? I th I think you would uh, like the break better because Expensive. you you get into stroke, like you feel you feel confident when you make a ball and get the position. So I think the speed will come. Uh, it yep. will die in. But you don't get position because you're not feeling the speed. Yeah. Close to the rail. This cue ball will arc a little bit. Oh, nice, nice. Playing real good. Really good. He's not in the zone. He's not playing his A game. It's v it's very tense out there. Yes, but his I think his B game is like really strong too. So That's it. Yes. One shot at a time. Having a clear mind. Seeing the right angles. Some players would punch it, go short, long, and then to the left of the nine. Feather often will let that cue ball roll, force it a little bit less. This is very purposeful. Not good news for Skylar Woodward, that's for sure. Points to work. It's now 4 1 to the title holder, and Skylar Woodward has problems. But he's had a, a great career, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that. First time I played, I was 10 years old. Uh, my dad just took me to the pool hall, and uh, I just fell in love with the game right away. First cue was a southeast cue. Uh, first memory of pool was uh, when I, I won like four tournaments in a row at home uh, to buy myself this limited edition cue. First idol uh, in pool was Shane Van Bone. First success as a pro was probably winning the World Pool Series in New York. Some really interesting scores around the arena. Now, uh, guest in the country box, Mickey Krause, he lost his first match to Max Lechner from Austria. Lechner, yesterday, qualified with a 9-0 win. He's 6-0 up at the moment against Veronika Ivanovskaya. Elliot Sanderson, he let out a, a massive shout of delight when he won to get into the last 64. He's 5-0 upon Ivica Putnik from Croatia. Albin Ocean 5-0 up on Sanyan Perlovanovic. No shot clock on the break. He's taking his time well. Lost his cue ball a little bit. Hit it a little thinner. Than but before. his one ball is really good, so it's pretty much doesn't matter where the cue ball ends up because the one ball is like around the corner every it's single time. Uh, it's perfect. This break is working perfect for Gorst. And you manipulate the one ball, of course, with the thickness of the hit, but more so with high and low on the cue ball. The players will try to not make it go in the side pocket. Yeah, he's also playing with a little bit of spin. You can see that on uh, the cue ball when he hits the cushion. As close as he can to the two ball and away from the rail. Cue ball ended up close to the long rail, had it come out two centimeters, one inch, 
the 2 8 combination would have been, I don't know, 20% easier. Still expect him to make it though. But it's a tough shot, and the two ball might go to the to the end rail, and that's what he's trying to avoid. I, I don't think he can hold the two. I think he'll need to follow. Or, very gutsy, punch it, bring it over the two. Always a difficult shot. Has left nothing open for Skylar Woodward, but a nice angle. The five and seven up table, the three nine here below. Be a letdown if he doesn't play good safety from here. Snooker. Mmm. Mm. Wow, that's a really good shot there. Yeah. Wow. Very, very uh, aggressive, positive, um, very convinced to put that cue ball tight behind the six. Some players, I think, would have chosen to get that cue ball behind the nine, but this is much better. Don't think he can hit this with a lot of speed. Shot on the two. Couple of pockets. All pockets are available for the three. He won't focus on top position on the three too much. Wants to make the two, see the three. Oh, good shot. A little bit close on the three. But in order to stay above the three, he needed to hit that ball fat. Nice try. Always pleasing when both aspects of your game help you win a rack. Obviously, he's played the, the really good tactical shot. Now it's all about knocking them in. Yes, that pinch hit doesn't have a very long, smooth follow-through. It's sharp, it's precise. Gets a lot of action in the cue ball with little speed. Good reply. Now in prime position. 20 to 1. 50 to 1. He'll get this wreck. short has made harder shots in this rack on the two on the three on the six that it's was much a needed a well played rack from Skylar Woodward he hooked Fedor Gorst and when he got the chance he took it with both hands
Half of the round of 64 is being played at the moment. It was going well for Kelly Fisher on table five, but now she's 4-3 down to Jeremy Fosey after leading 3-1. As for table two, though, it is one away traffic. Sanyan Perlovanovic finds himself trailing Albin Aschen, who's caught fire, the Austrian leading 7-0 after depositing this nine ball. Likes it here at Milton Keynes. He won the Championship League pool at this very venue, although not in this room. And now he's well on the way to a place in the last 32 of the big one. This has on Frank. Skylar Woodward is trailing by four extra two and will break. Skylar Woodward. Played some great shots to get that sixth track and the initiative. Playing six ball from here. Made three balls on the break. Just lost the cue ball a little bit. Sacrificed prime position to allow himself to play it with a bit more speed. That shot on the two. And it cost him. That's a big miss by Skylar Woodward. The cue action, Alex, wasn't fluent, was it? It was jabby. Yeah, I think a player feels subconsciously that he's not aligned right. So therefore, it's unable to deliver uh, without moving. Because your system is not set on target. If a player works on alignment and gets in line better, siding better, uh, he'll feel that he hits the ball more true because he's set straight. He doesn't need to move in order to make it. Like uh, Judd Trump is snooker, he's so far offline. He needs to move to hit the ball straight. Really weird. And that's surprising. It's a very long stroke and follow through. Federal course. It's surprising for him to under hit that kind of shot. What do you think, Mickey? They feel the pressure? Yeah, I definitely think I definitely think he uh, feels the pressure. have hit that better yeah very clean with the trace of check side need a lot of men mental strength to recover you put yourself in a bad spot then you need to come with it overcome the frustration and set things right and he has done just that Needs to. Needs to punish. And finish. He has the missed three ball from Skylar Woodward, and the rest was done by Fedor Gorst to lead 5 2. So Michael is with a, a very happy guest, Christina to catch. Yes, Christina to catch the girlfriend of Fedor. But Christina, starting you quickly, you, you were in this tournament yesterday as well. A great experience for you. 
Yeah, it was a very great experience. It's always great to play with men who are always punishing you for your mistakes. It's definitely a very good experience. Yeah, fantastic. And we look forward to seeing you again here. Um, on Fedor, he's growing into this game now. He's showing his class. Yeah, with uh, as he said earlier in the interview, he with every match he's playing better and better, and now he's looking so much more confident and comfortable playing this table. So I'm sure he's gonna um, play better in further in the tournament. And this is a big match against Skylar Woodward, who is a big player himself. So it was a very very interesting draw when it came out. Yeah, it's uh, the draw is amazing, especially the next match that we're gonna see here as two uh, captains captains of Moscone Cup. It's it's gonna be a great match. What was Fedor thinking this morning? Was he confident? Was there any nerves? We know there's a lot of pressure being the reigning world champion. Well, uh, he he definitely felt pressure, especially in the first match, as you could see. Uh, but now he feeling very casual, like just another day in the office, and uh, he's ready to get it. How amazing would it be if he won this trophy again? How, how, how big would it be for his career? I think he wouldn't believe it himself because <laughs> he, he said to me earlier that um, he still can't believe that he's a world champion and winning the second title would be just an unreachable dream for him. Yeah, I mean, and you two have been together. You've been in Milton Keynes here for two weeks, haven't you? So you've had good practice here as well. Yeah, we, we had uh, a lot of practice, but, you know... Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, ready to go for the next game. Ready for the match now. 5 2, Fed or Ghost. Only one player has successfully Frank. defended this WPA World Nine Ball Championship. Earl Strickland, the one and only. He won it in 1990, the inaugural year in 1991. First in Bergheim, Germany, and then in Las Vegas. Let's see if Fedor Gorst can copy the successful break. New ball to two and a half diamonds on the left. One ball coming over the side pocket. No, not a shot. But behind the steering wheel with a great opportunity to lock up Skylar Woodward. He hit, he hit the break good, but uh, he was kicked away. So. A little unfortunate. How do you like that? A lock up safety. For a second there, I thought Skyler was going down and pulled the trigger right there and then. Awesome safety. Needs to play it with the tad left spin. Nice hit. Also a good speed, I think. Oh. <laughs> nice return. Yeah, players with kick shots, on many kick shots, they don't know exactly how they will hit it, but they have this knowledge and instinct and try to guess the speed that will give them the highest probability of resaving. This is hard. This is hard. Three balls in the way for the three rail route towards the one. And four is a very big ball. I hope for Gorst that he does not need to play this with left spin. Rather aim for half the one ball without spin than trying to come into the ball. Shot. Now let's see if Skyler can freeze the cue ball on the seven like Feather did before. And he hit that perfectly. Yes, and look at the one where it is. Together with the nine. So with ball in hand, if Gorst fails to contact the one ball, the one nine combination will end this wreck quickly. If Gorst fails to hit the one. Foul shot. 
And when the cue ball is so Ooh, close to the cushion like that you're aiming at, it is so difficult to judge the escape Start angle. The A bit of consolence that the two ball knocked it nine away. So no easy finish for Skylar Woodward. With stun, go past the eight ball. Keep them. 30 degree angle on the three. This is it's okay. It's just about okay. Twice across. Managed to hold it. It's a nice match. Great safeties. Good breaks. Nice runouts. And the momentum ebbing back and forth. That's the thing with the. Um with the winner's break, you can really count the, the other guy out because you can easily run like five racks. Or one and save and then two, just hold the initiative. Yeah. Gorse didn't play a bad shot on that first safety after the break, it was just a nice escape by Woodward. That's what yes, happens. He hit it with some good speed. You're always yeah. vulnerable if you play nine ball. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how good you play. And although Gorst has demonstrably been the better player so far, Woodward is sticking there. Still involved, Skylar still in the hunt. Gorsh lead is reduced to 5 3. The name of Woodward is not on this trophy. The name of Gorst is there. The last player to win, of course, there was no event in 2020 due to the COVID 19 pandemic. So Gorst is the defending champion. He won in Doha, Qatar. Actually, in this round, the last 64. He overcame Jakob Konia from Slovakia, 11-8. We might see a similarly close run thing in the match we're watching right now. Joshua Fuller, he was the champion in 2018. Albin Auschen, 2016 champion, he's still involved. Plenty of names engraved on that trophy who are in action here today. So, of course, taking a look around the, the outside tables to see what he can glean. Alvin yeah, Auschen now 7-1 up on Sanyan Polovanovic on table Sanyan two. Torsten Homan, former winner of this event. He's 6-3 up on Stephen Holman from Canada. 6-2 Mario He over Mark Vidal. Good break by Woodward, that one ball got kissed by the red three ball up in the kitchen. But the rollout of the one, he's compensated. Almost unmissable 1-6 combination. He'll make the one, but it's a little bit tricky to play it exactly like you want it from the one to the two Just making sure to see it don't think you'll try to get straight in on the three ball the four is gone so it's the red three and then the purple five needs to get in straight on the five Hold it, or back and forth. It's like in between. Can cheat the pocket. 
keep it a little bit longer. While he's walking around the table, I can tell you Roberto Gomez from the Philippines, 9-1 up on Mohamed Daydat, a South African living in Geneva, Switzerland. Does he have... He came a little too straight on that one. Extension, please. Makes a little angle. Anything will do. Hmm. It doesn't look like much. How much will he dare to cheat the pocket? To force the cue ball out there. He might just jack up and stop the cue ball. Yeah. Yuck. That's the last resort. It's not a shot you want to play for that long eight. He'll draw back. Gets him a little bit closer to his work. Big shot this. Yeah, by catching the near jaw with that pot, he was able to create a little more angle than had he potted it directly into the into the bag. Sharp. Ooh, that will do him good. Very nice. Very strong shot by Woodward. Woodward wins two. Yes, Woodward on the comeback trail. The eight ball in particular was eye-catching. And now Fedor Gorsh lead has been reduced to only 5-4. Match on. It's tight on table one. Not so on table two. Albin Aushin has just taken an 8-1 lead over Sanyan Perlovanovic. Here are the, the latest scores. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong over on table 15 leads Craig Osborne 6-2. Capito is coached by David Rowe, former member of the world's top 16 in snooker. Cracking player, David, and now doing great coaching work over in Hong Kong. Max Lechner, 8-2 up on Veronica Ivanovskaya. And Ralph Suke, the, the veteran, the gnarled veteran with all of the experience. He's 5-4 up on Aloysius Yap from Singapore. Yes, yep. 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 Uh, not this time. <laughs> Rack 10. Skala Woodward is turning 5-4 and will be. Woodward made a great eight ball to save the rack. Nice little pop break. Nothing fancy. It's working. It is, and he get the he get the cue ball stuck there at at the middle of the table. Nice pop, that's how they call it. Oh, clean. Very clean. Look at this. Got straight in on the seven in the rack before. Needs to go from the blue two Central to piece. the red three. I think he just remembered that seven or the position on the seven. Let me try and keep an angle on that three ball. at perfect speed. Wow. Looked 
like a little snatch. Looks cool, calm and collected, but then the occasional lapse of concentration, I think. I thought for sure he would play it like one rail. The oh. bottom rail and then the cue ball up to the four. Well, uh, maybe the angle was not, not natural. Maybe he needed to slide the cue ball to play that shot. This was fine. He just overcooked it. He did too hard. And that's the second time, Alex, we've seen Woodward play a poor positional shot and then immediately follow up with a missed ball. The three comes to mind a little earlier. I think uh, overall also what I saw from him in Gibraltar, he, you know, he looks to evolve, to have developed into a better player, more cubal control, better positions. It's not a happy-go-lucky Woodward that we've seen in previous years. Looks so easy, but takes a lot of guts to play that safety. That speed, this nasty roll shot. It's a tough shot. Knowing also that if it leaks, you give the opponent an easy opportunity to resave you. rewarded for the speed he played it with. It's open, the four, but doesn't have an open shot on the four. I said before, it takes guts to play that soft safety that Gors did. It takes guts to kick the four ball the way that Wood Woodward did. Shot. It's all about avoiding the nine with the four ball on the way in. I don't think the two railer, short, long to the four is available. We'll play one. Oh, he sees enough. It's on two rails. Don't know if he will attack the four. Not the easiest four. No, and he, um, we saw it also on day one when he came out to play the first TV match against Maggi from Estonia. He played pretty conservative. Nice shot. Such a complete game, this young man, and that is because he always plays all games. It's not one-dimensional, Fedor Gorst, neither is Skyler Woodward. Plays the banks, plays the one pocket, plays bar box. It's all information. We'll give you more nows and tricks, bigger toolbox. It seems like they're playing everything in the in the US. Well, he's happy. He's surviving the snookers that he's needing to get out from. Until now. A little unfortunate there was a good shot. So important where you pocket the ball in the pocket. Thin or thick. Gently to the rail. Good speed. 
He doesn't get mentioned a lot, Fedor Korst, as one of the potential favorites, but was also questionable how his form would be after the Gibraltar World Pool Masters, one of the other Matchroom Pool Series events. Lost hard in that tournament, but he's looking very solid, Gorst. Well measured game. Yeah, he was beaten 7 1 in his opening match by Shane Van Boning, but the way Van Boning played, we couldn't gain an awful lot from that in terms of how Gorst was going to perform here. I think he's played really well in this match, not doing a great deal incorrect, and yet he's only got a one frame lead to show for it. Good shot there. Yeah, cross side. He doesn't miss, miss many. And then I'll refer to him playing bank pool again. All the guys can make that bank, but some make it more than others. The bank pool champion Thorpe yesterday in his match on the TV table made five in his match, race to nine. It's always good if you like make it, but make it ugly. That's like a wake up call. Staying on the right side of the nine, but playing it with top. fault wreck this every wreck actually but we've seen some safeties going back and forth in the end the reward for Gorst for his patience yes and I don't think even the most ardent Skylar Woodward supporter could possibly deny that Fedor Gorst is good value for this 6-4 lead
Welcome back to the middle day, the third day of five at this World Tour Championship at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. They are the latest scores in the last 64. The race is on to be the first player into the last 32. Right now, the favourites would be Roberto Gomez and a 27-year-old from Barnsley, Elliot Sanderson, who's in command against Evita Putnik. There you can see 10-3 Sanderson leads. The holder breaking on table one. Looking to extend this lead. By the way, Billy Thorpe was losing at first 4-0 against the Czech. Michael Gavenchuk has won five games uh, in a row. Leading now. Some runaway matches, but a few close ones. Yushishin and uh, Lotvi, your fellow countryman, uh, Mickey Kraus, is, uh, has fought himself well back in the match. Seems to be a good one. Fedor, he's, he got a really strong uh, break here. You can see the cue ball ends up in the middle of the table like every single time. Put in the hours, the hard work. Not for two months, not for two years, but the past seven, eight years. But all American hopes will be on that tied up four ball, somewhat tied up four ball. Requires a heck of a positional shot from the three to the four. Hmm, I'll take it back. <laughs> I'll take that back. Just a stroke shot. Center table. The cut is on. Float back and forth and make sure to not get behind that nine ball. Extension called. It's one 30 second extension per rack and Gorse doing the right thing here. He's a little undecided, so taking more time just to get his, his thoughts together. He knew it was likely that he'd have a cut on the purple five ball. Assess that rather the cut on the five and flirting with inside spin check side and the risk of landing behind the nine Assessed it decided it was good enough this position When do you force the issue and when do you choose to divide the burden over two shots? It's never fun when uh, you hear the beep and you don't have an extension. <laughs> Not for you. We enjoy it. Form-wise, it's not a flawless match for Gorst, but he looks to be a good nick. Strong mental game. He plays a solid game in this one. He plays some good safeties, and but it's not flawless, like you said. Taking good care of an almost straight in eight ball. You can't have allow to make a silly mistake from here. Wants to keep his foot down. Keep Skyler in the chair. Skyler's explosive yeah, is dangerous, so but not when he's seated. Yeah, so Gorscht takes a 7-4 lead. The man who came back from 6-2 down to beat Mark Maggi in his first match and then beat Mark Gray next up. He's looking good. Now, there's a great view here, you know, from two of the balconies at the Marshall Arena. There's Carl Boys. He should be in this commentary box, but of course he's been practicing for his match coming up. From either balcony, it's a terrific view, and there 
is, in many people's eyes, the title favourite, Shane Van Boning. He knows he's on camera, and he's going to be on camera a lot a little later this afternoon against Jason Shaw on the main table, and that's the view that Shane has got. Yep. David Alcady, the former World Masters champion, he leads Radislav Babica, 7-3. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong, 8-3 up now on Craig yeah. Osborne. Frack 12th. Torstorff Homer, former break. champion. Leading by seven rest of Holland from Canada, 7-5. Let's see if we can keep up the good breaks here. Something he's known for is consistency. Many warm-up strokes. Willing that cue ball to not go in and then to stay up table for shape on the one. Acknowledging his good bit of fortune. Well, I've just heard a shout, and bearing in mind he shouted after he won last time, you will know who is the culprit. Elliot Sanderson has beaten Avita Putnik 11 3. I'll tell you what, he lets everyone know he's won when he gets through. But the first player into the last 32 just a few moments ago was Mario He from Austria, who beat Mark Vidal Claremont from the USA 11 2. He's an excitable character, that Sanderson, Alex. Yeah, it doesn't wear his heart. Wears his heart on his sleeve, a lot of temperament. I think, you know, there are more people. For example, Josh Filler, he likes to make himself hurt, but he's just... Yeah, there are other tables, a lot of play going on. But good on him, Sanderson. In the end, in the end, it's a game and we play and we love to win and perform. Look at that. Nice route. Some race to 11. Solid position there. It's a solid position. He has a winning position in the wreck. And the score line is starting to look like a winning position for the Moscovite. But that's the difficulty in nine ball. You have the wreck one, but you still need to win it. Yeah, but we shouldn't count the Scala out because it's still uh, it's still winner breaks. One on the spot. I think it still can come, oh, come no, back. 100%. I mean, uh, if you're up in the score, sometimes it can also ignite something with the, spaler, uh, with the player that is trailing. Sure it, can. Ca it can help him kick Extension, into the next gear. Especially a player like Woodward, who is so explosive. Sniff of a chance can be enough. Going forward two rails, it seems. Nice. Very nice shot. Just turned 21, I think, a week ago. You wouldn't tell by his demeanor and his play. Yes, in 2019, when he captured the title, he was the second youngest winner of the event. It will take some beating. Wu Chia Ching, who won it when he was 16 and also completed the world nine and eight ball double in the same year. Another winner for you, Roberto Gomez has beaten Mohamed Daydat 11-2. Stops 
unfortunate time. Hit that cue ball a millimeter too low. Always tricky those in between shots. Stun draw instead of full stun or full draw. We have the biggest gap between the two players in this match so far. Four racks and Fedor Gorscht now leads Skylar Woodward by eight racks to four. Here we go with Roberto Gomez. In went the nine ball. He's loving it, the Filipino. Mohamed Daydad from South Africa. Roberto, first player through to the next round. How good does that sound? Uh, it sounds really good. Um, I'm playing really my, my A game today. Yeah, I'm breaking and running out good. I can see everything clear. My mental is so clear today. So fantastic. I hope it's going to be all the way through. Well, fantastic. It was a fantastic performance. Superman performance, looking at your T-shirt. Superman is back. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you get even better, as great as that was, but can you get even better this week? Yeah, I can uh, try to be focused mentally, especially mentally. It's all mental because everybody, everybody, is, uh, everybody can run, break and run. It's all about mental and luck. Here, uh, your mental is always positive. Even your consistency will be there because it's everybody's game. And the way you feel right now, do you feel like you could beat anybody? Yes, I wish. It will finish today. <laughs> the tournament will finish today. And I will be, uh, no matter what, I'm going to do a good performance for sure. Many, many congratulations, Roberto. Brilliant performance. Thank you. Now, while that interview was going on, that reaction was going on. <laughs> there it is. Elliot Sanderson, 11-3. He defeats, defeats a Putnik. I'll tell you what, talk about being wound up.
didn't see. Or maybe he fancied himself hitting the one, but not the probability of resaving. You know what? I'll give you ball in hand and a more difficult table. In nine ball, if you make three consecutive fouls, you lose the rack. Extension called. So that's something that Woodward will have on his mind. And the amount of time that Woodward needs here tells us could have been a good choice by Gorst. Try to bump the four. I think he tried to bump the four because the four is blocking the two ball to the corner, low left. So then the next time with ball in hand, he would have a shot for the second ball. If he can hit this one right in the back of the one ball, he can, get a, he can get a good uh, resave on this one. Yeah, all the balls are spread well. Many good things can happen. Just make sure to hit the ball. I think the the shot off of the right side of the table is a little bit harder than off the left, but he sees better things here, more future. Budushey, they say in Russia. You look for a shot with a good future. Just a shot find it makeable one with an angle for Woodward to open the 2-8 oh needs to watch out that's good yeah of course he uh, he hit it pretty much the worst way possible with the, with the one ball being there so he could get into so he could get into the uh, into the two ball and the eight. The red three, the pink four. A little bit of caution from the four to the six. Third more angle. Mm. Needs to load the cue ball up for the spin now to hold it. And although it's not identical, he missed a, a three ball. Similar to this, to this pocket, in rack seven. Mm. So what now? Attack the corner, attack the side pocket. It's a great recovery shot here. Wants to stay at the table. Nice, good shot. Very nice. Good solid stroke he got on that one. That will fuel his confidence. Fuel a potential comeback. Yeah, it's a huge difference between uh, eight five and nine four. Isn't it just that was a fighting display from Skylar Woodward and talking of which, we're gonna catch up with the shouter and the shooter. Elliot Sanderson. We found the culprit, Mr. Loudwan, but Elliot, many, many congratulations. Fantastic performance. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was probably the best match of uh, probably best match of my life, actually. Uh, really solid from the start. Uh, broke great. Uh, the Rackers was really good. I uh, played really good. I went on a bit of a on one, I would say, and kind of like kept him in his seat. And uh, he looked really cold when he comes to the table. And I kind of felt like uh, the momentum was all with me. Was it one of those games for you where everything just goes right? Yeah, I didn't really miss anything. I think I made miss one ball and 
I was just, uh, everything come out nice. They were like hitting them and coming out like flowers, you know, just dot to dot. You're one of the first players through. What was the feelings you were having this morning? Confidence, nerves, tell us about it. Yeah, I come down to practice and I was playing not so good. So I was a bit worried this morning, to be honest. Uh, went to breakfast and kind of thinking that, uh, I hope I play well in the match. So I wasn't practicing great, but then I got out there and just seemed to click. We got in the zone and the rest is history. Getting into the later stages now as well, and if you play like that, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Never know. Stranger things have happened, right? Uh, it's crazy for me to be here. I'm really honoured to play in this event. Uh, thanks to COVID for not allowing all the players to get invited, and uh, it's a pleasure. And what a match room doing here is really, really great, and I'm honoured to be here. Well, you fully deserve it. Excellent performance. Well done. Thank you. Look at that reaction. A man of Barnsley, a great sporting town that's produced cricketers like Darren Goff and Jeffrey Boycott, Michael Parkinson, the Trailing great the interviewer, interest. was born there, Dickie Bird, the cricket empire. It's a matchroom town as well. We've had plenty of events at the Metrodome, Championship League snooker, the Weber Cup, 10-pin bowling, and now we've got Elliot Sanderson involved. A bunch of kisses to help Woodward get his shape on that one ball would make you know would would make the the match even more attractive if he now goes on a run to close the gap all the way a little bit or even overcome the deficit and take the lead. You never know in the winner break format. Seems like there's a little problem with the five ball, so I guess the key ball will of course be. Uh, the four to the five. I would actually say the three. You know, if you, you, you if you, it's about playing the three ball right and setting yourself up nicely on the four. Yeah, but yeah, but I think um, you have like a natural angle from the three to the four. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, but there's no way you know that natural angle but stay on the right side of the ball all of the debate is over for David Alcady he has won convincingly 11-3 against Radislav Babica 28 to 1 to win the title as of today before the start of the last 64 round such a good player Two-time World Masters champion. This tells us, looking at Woodward, that he doesn't have the required angle on the four. Bank it. He won't go forward with the cue ball. Stun draw or big draw around the nine even. That's the way to hit it. That's a great shot right there. Makes the bank easier if you play it like that. If you have a, a very clear line for the cue ball with an authoritative stroke. The chase. for Gorst to remain cool in the chair not start thinking about the ifs buts or how this chance came to Woodward Skyler is proving stubborn the 8-4 lead that Fedor Gorst has has shrunk to 8-6 
je... Results are coming in thick and fast, but on table two, they are still battling away. Albin Ausham was in total command early on. Not so now, though. Sanyan Perlovanovic has fought back really powerfully. Ausham should take this rack, mind you. He's such a, a cool customer. Trying to stave off the fight back of the youngster from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Two female players have gone out of the tournament. Veronica Ivanovskaya beaten 11-4 by Max Lechner. Jeremy Sosi from the USA, he defeated Kelly Fisher 11-5. So just one woman player remains. And that is Jasmine Aushin, one of the stars of Skyler yesterday. She's up against Alexa Baselsh. Yeah, standout performance yesterday by Jasmine Ocean. First beating Jeff De Luna on the TV table. 5-0 up, then 5-5 five, five from, from there the winner. But then against Mark Gray, 5-0 down. Granite Gray had her in the ropes. But she escaped. Gorst had Woodward in the ropes for 20 minutes or so. Tables have turned. It's the Americans' turn to fire shots. Good shot. It's back and forth, uh, Mickey. Just the kind of match we anticipated. Yes, like I said, from the beginning, you should never count a, a guy out because of the winner's break. And and Skyler, he's good enough to run like, what, seven racks in a row, so. And that's the difficulty also, like the mental challenge for the players. The not knowing, the not knowing is the worst. Referring to the whole pandemic and the lockdowns and the information back and forth. 
for me it was very frustrating with not knowing the when the what the how the why that's with this winner break format you don't know what your opponent is going to hit you with Yeah, taking extra time, making sure he doesn't land straight on the seven again. Stay away from the rail. Slight angle. Two accelerations, top spin after impact and a right spin off of the rail. match proving just to be what we expected and hoped for when we saw the lineup it's a cracker deficit reduced to 8-7 now a little earlier on David Alcady he of two World Tour Masters wins the man from Spain well he defeated Radislav Babica from Poland a really experienced player who's been involved in these matchroom events for years. Al Qaeda came through 11 3. David, many congratulations. A very good performance. How happy are you with that? Yes, he's taught strong matches. I played with him so many times in Europe, the Euro Tour. Uh, I know this, this first match, the last 64, is so important for, for everybody. Uh, I think I play really, really solid. Uh, really, I am play good confident in myself. Uh, we will see what happens in this round. Um, assess your three days here so far. Are you very happy, or is there more to come from you? No, no. I, of course, very happy. Very happy. Uh, the match room give the opportunity to play in this amazing tournament, this amazing venue. Um, trying to play my best billiard. For, for next round, um, of course, very, very happy. Uh, with the draw in the next round, are you happy to avoid people or is there players you would like to play or are you, are you happy? I, I don't know who is my opponent in next round. I'm trying to focus in, my, in myself. Um, next round is maybe tonight. I don't know the, the time, but uh, we will see what happens. I try and play better. And we know you're a World Pool master before, <laughs> uh, but how good would it be to the, be a World Pool champion? Try and don't think about that. Uh, I try to think in next round, round to round, is, is more important for me. Brilliant. Congratulations, David. Thank you so much. Good guy, David Alcady. We do know a couple of last 32 matchups already. Max okay, Lechner will take on the shouter, Elliot Sanderson. And Mario He takes on Miesko Fortunski. It all came good. Looking at the one and the cue ball. But the two is tied up with the three. Now there's a little over. Well, there's not a ball distance between the two and three. But if you put an imaginary ball next to the two, you can have a very distinct idea of where you're going to impact the three. So what I'm trying to say is the carom on the three ball arm. We can choose, we can try and bank the two ball or hit the three and it looks, from what I see if I look at the TV table, he would need to manipulate that three ball a little with the right spin. It chooses looks like not to do it. Yeah. It's safe. He overran the position, I think. Maybe had the yeah, cube been a, a bit hair. slower, yeah. he would have played it. During Gorst thinking time, let me tell you that Mickey Krause's World Cup partner, Baram Lotfi, has won 
He's beaten Konrad Trzuszyn from Poland, 11-8. That's a good match by Lotfi. Yes, Jususzyn is a really strong player from Poland. I think he's been the most successful. Won the most. Like that three, uh, the two ball to hit the three. Didn't have a lot to play for. He played a containing shot, trying to not lose with the shot. Cross side, but. A lot of angle on the three. I think this is too much angle to hold it with check side. Cutting the Maybe three. Maybe back and forth. Yeah. Well, he's good at cutting balls. So Extension he will place. need to play the three. He might play, he might play uh, the cue ball where the three ball is right now. Like back and forth. That look easy. Next problem, the six ball. He's playing the purple five. The six does not seem to pass the eight ball. The six eight combination is nice if you're dead behind the six. So I think he'll try and come around the six or land on the right side of it. Good shot. A lot of mileage for the cue ball and then landing on the sweet spot. That was good. That was scary. It really was. You don't want to be testing how forgiving the pockets are in the last 64 match in the World Championship. done it it eight looks like it. four down he's fought himself back he's playing good now eight eight race to 11 is now a race to three and the american woodward will be breaking yes what a comeback this is no doubt pleasing a certain individual who's watching from our balcony here at the marshall arena in milton Keynes. shane van boning on the right hand side rivalry what rivalry chatting away with his opponent coming up after this match jason shaw it could be a final it is the last 64 and of course involved also our pal chris melling abby congratulations a Thank good you. win it could even have been a bigger score yeah, of course. I mean, in the in the beginning, it looked a little bit like uh, maybe uh, a donut, but uh, he came back very strong, uh, fluked the one ball, which uh, gave him a little bit more confidence in the end. But uh, I'm very happy that I pulled out two great shots uh, to go on the hill and then run out. Yeah, it's been qu quite a week for you as well, obviously, that day as well with the frustrating night against Roberto Gomez. But does that seem a long time ago now, given you're through now to the round of 16? Yeah, definitely. It felt a little bit like a deja vu. But uh, on the other side, I was the guy who was sitting in the chair and waiting to finally get on the hill. But uh, it's such a big relief now. I mean, uh, Zanjin is a great player and uh, I'm sad for him, but I'm happy for me. You know what it's like to go all the way here. Do you think that might help you as the tournament goes on? Well. I'm feeling very good, to be honest. I uh, played a very, very solid uh, match against Sanjin. Um, feeling good so far, so let's see what the uh, next round brings. Brilliant. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. That was Alban Ashen there. 
who is through to the last 32. And he will face either Torsten Homan or Stephen Horn. Homan leading that one, 9-8 at the moment. He lost the cue ball a little bit, but he was kicked to a perfect position, so... It looks good so far for Woodward. Three cases. It's all in the game. And he's definitely making hay while the sun shines. A rhythm player. And it looks like he's in the zone. Let's get him go. Playing quicker and quicker. Oh. And exactly that. We notice him going quicker around the table. The adrenaline rush through his body. But he got a little lucky there. Yeah. Whatever. Gorst is happy to be at the table. Extension call. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, this is a shot. He's jumping. This is a really tough shot. Very scary. Got to land on it without getting out of the table. Foul shot. You Foul could on. see that coming. Yeah. And if, if anyone can do it, it's Feder Gorse, but it was asking a lot. Yeah, it was almost impossible. It was... It was a tough shot. And he knew it. A slice of fortune. Leaving that five ball safe. After he missed it. Skylar Woodward knows he got away with something. With a big error. With ball in hand, easy, relatively easy to pick up the pieces and continue his run. This for five on the trot. Skylar Woodward wins to. And how about this? What a transformation in fortunes. Fedor Gorst, he led eight racks to four. Now, for the first time, he trails because Skylar Woodward has taken a 9 8 lead. So look at the stats, it's 97 versus 96% pot success. That's high, that's the match we're watching. Safety error seems like a lot, five to three, but it's that type of match, especially in the beginning, they weren't having position after the break. Good safety play, a good comeback by Skylar Woodward, and the luck where he snookered Gorst after he missed the five. It's evenly packed, but with the 9-8 advantage and the break in Rack 18, Skylar Woodward holding the best hand of cards. So these are the very latest score lines. The majority of the first wave of matches in this last 64 are over, but not the featured match. Lost the cue ball and a lot of distance to the one, but he sees it. He has a shot. It was close to scratching right there. A natural angle for the cue ball. This is only 
about the line of the cue ball, make the ball, and he'll see the three ball will come around the seven automatically. Big shot this. Big shot by a big player. Thought he had a line to come around that seven further, easier. It's possibly that the thickish hit on the one. Oh, he didn't want to hit that. To make things worse with the distance and the angle on the fourth, place. that eight ball on the short rail makes life more complicated. Looks like running into the eight if he goes forward with the cue ball. And it's a smooth stroke to draw that cue ball out. Miss it on the right, the eight ball. Shot. That's a very nice shot. Really good shot by Woodward there. If cue ball players and shot makers, a spectrum. And on that spectrum, Woodward definitely more of a shot maker. He's made some great shots in this match. Holding his nerve. Three more shots and then he gets to break for the match. Outing the reigning world champion. Six racks in succession from Skylar Woodward. He was in trouble, 8-4 down. Now he's in the ascendancy, 10-8 ahead on the hill.
an abundance of action at the Whirlpool Championship. You can see the results sweeping through. Billy Thorpe is into the next round, beating Michael Kavantiak, 11-8. Mark Bosch. he's 11-7. The victor Frank. over Carol Skaversky. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong, the youngster, has beaten Craig Osborne, 11-5. And Torsten Homan has beaten Stephen Holland, 11-8. Breaking for the match, Skylar Woodward is. Is it open? Does that two ball pass the eight? Looks like it does. Then the next question, is the nine in the way to go two rails out to center table? Now, if it's tight, if he has half, half pocket, three quarter ball pocket, playing this with high and right spin is nasty. But if he makes it? If he, if he makes it and lands on the three, it's there. It's there for the taking. He goes for it. He goes for the cheese. Oh, yeah, he goes. Well, he might go really for the cheese on this shot going into the nine. Rather that than topspin would check. Riding the cheese. Made sure to see the three ball. No, Draw it behind tight. the four and the eight. Yeah. Oh, he makes it. Oh. Oh, what a trick he pulled there. But I guess he, he got two chances on that one. So that means that it's there, an open shot on the four. Tricky with this angle. Good shot right there. Cannot say he played it in a shy way. He made sure that the ball didn't roll off. Four more balls to win his match to beat the reigning world champion. But what a comeback this this has been. Seven in a row was losing 8-4. It's funny I said that before. He can easily win uh, seven racks because he's a good player. Some might think it's funny, some might not. But what we have seen is a great match of a great third day at this World Pool Championship. Will not falter here. The last nine to advance to the last 32 and send Fedor Gors packing. And now the headline at the Marshall Arena. The King is dead. And for Woodward, Skyler is the limit. What a performance.